Hi, I'm Elle Elwood, and um, I'm here this evening with the fantastic Lydia Newell, who runs a free Facebook group called Women Together. Uh, she also runs her own Works For Me coaching business, uh, is a trained career coach and a life coach. Is there anything this woman can't do? I mean, honestly. Um, and Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> We are hoping, Lydia, that you'll be able to share with us a little bit this evening about how to perhaps identify things like personal KPIs in terms of sort of self-care and personal goals, which will then give us the bunk up that we need to be our best selves within the workplace so we can smash our workplace goals as well. Yeah, well, I mean, I can do my best. We will see. We'll see how this goes. And hopefully technology is all going to work. Um, so I've got a few notes just to make sure I stay on track because, Elle, you will know I am the queen of going off on little tangents. So um, you either need to go with that or I'll stick with my notes. So I'm going to try to stick with my notes. The tangents are always <laughs> valuable. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> In my experience. But yes, yeah, 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 yeah. Totally depends. <laughs> depends on the tangent of it. So, I mean, what I thought would be a good place to start. Elle, you're a fan of Tony Robbins. I know you are. Have you heard his quote when he says, where focus goes, energy flows? Yes. Have you heard that quote before? So that's something that I just constantly remind myself of. Because wherever you're putting your attention, that's where your energy goes that's where a lot of your brain power is going to go and that's where you're going to start seeing results so if you're focusing on all the things you don't want your energy is going to go to those things if you're focusing on the things you do want your energy is going to go there so i was just having a quick think about what do i want to share with you lovely people this evening and i think in terms of personal kpis because a lot of people think personal kpis and goals they're the same thing and often they are they can be used interchangeably but i would say there's a slight distinction that your goal is the end result the thing you want to see happen and your kpi is how you measure on your journey there am i on the right track am i making progress am i going in the right direction and they're your milestones if you like um, so in terms of setting personal KPIs, I think the first place you need to start is really figuring out what are your goals? What do you want your life to look like? Um, like you said, Elle, these, when you're, when you're working on your personal KPIs, it has an impact on your work KPIs as well. Because if you're feeling like you're in balance, because work isn't the only thing we do, is there? There's a, there's a rumor going around that life is more than just what we do at work um, and so there is more to life than work so i hear so i hear and um, so i think actually it's one of those work is yeah we spend a lot of time there there's all these other things that make up who we are and if we're not paying attention to those things life can start to feel a bit wonky and work can start to get impacted so that's that's why i think it's so so important to pay attention to where you want to go in your life outside of work as well as inside of work. Yeah, is that an, is that a I think, introduction? Does that all make I, sense? It makes perfect sense to me. I think that's really a really helpful way actually of breaking down goals and how you can work towards them and, and what the purpose of a personal KPI is. Because it sounds a bit jargony, doesn't it? It sounds a bit um, of a buzzword, you know, rather than actually something practical, but it re re report refers to something that is measurable along the way to getting to a goal so how do you help people with goal setting because sometimes it can be a bit baffling like you know there's a lot of women in this group for example and, and i know that um they're dealing with children and cooking and all those sort of things that um that chaps often do do too but sometimes not in quite the same way so how do when you're a woman dealing with everything all of that already do you then go what do I want as well like it just becomes another layer of demand on you almost so how do you how do you goal set and make it a positive that's a really good question and I think I mean I've got the <laughs> I've got the this is how you goal set and you do this 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 and and potentially I will share that but I just want to kind of speak into what you were saying about when you're juggling all these things 
I don't know. Is it a woman thing? I, is it a is it an us thing? Like I'd say we're quite similar, L. I, I don't. It could it could well be. I think yeah. Stereotypically, yes, as a sweeping statement, yes, that we have all these things, and like you said, men do too. But we can only speak from our experience as women, can't we? So, <laughs> so absolutely agree that as women we juggle a lot. Maybe men do too. I'm not. I don't know. <laughs> but I, actually, I hear I specialise in working with women, and the thing that I hear the most is I come bottom of the pile. I don't have time to think about myself. I don't even know what I want. How could I even think about what I want when, or, or there's that mistake of, well, maybe not mistake, but slight um, confusion of, well, I'm happy when my husband's happy. I'm happy when my kids are happy. I want what they want. And that's wonderful. And that could be part of your goal, <clears throat> but I don't think it makes up the whole picture if we're truly honest with ourselves. And that's tricky, isn't it? To be totally honest with yourself, because yeah, it's only you that can call you out on it, and so you can say, "No, that that is me. That is me. Of course, I only want what my husband wants." Do you though? <laughs> I'm saying with a lot of love, because actually, as soon as you say it, as soon as you explain to somebody what you want, or you admit what you want, then you have to do something about it. Because if you don't, then you're faced with that fact that you knew what you want, you told someone about it, and then if you don't do anything about it, oh, do you then live with regret? Oh, and that's a horrible thing to be left with. So I do know a lot of women that maybe, maybe they do secretly know what they want, but they don't want to voice it, because that's quite a scary place to be in. So I just wanted to speak a little bit to that. Um, I think also when you if say, that, if that's helpful. yeah, definitely helpful. Because I think also when you say a goal out loud, it's not only a case of right, I've got to do something about it, but you you worry that if you don't achieve it, then you're going to look like a failure to the people or person that you've said it out loud to, which is another layer of pressure that you just do not want on your shoulders. You know, so I think I think there's a it's a yeah, saying a goal out loud to someone or writing it down or admitting it to yourself can be can be quite heavy. A heavy weight to bear <laughs> it can it can and there's there's all sorts of pressure involved in that isn't there but i mean i had a coaching call with a group of women of you were one of them l so this will be familiar to you um but we were talking about actually plans can change if you if you set a goal nobody is going to say well you said it so you ab well actually i say nobody some people might say this but you don't need to listen to those people so if you say if you say something out loud and then you change your mind or your circumstances change i and i think there's a lot of um resistance around setting goals a lot of resistance around planning because well what if i change my mind or what if i fail or and a lot of all of the things that we just talked about and I get it. I really get it. I, I totally do. But I also think actually if you don't set those goals and don't set those plans, then you're even less likely to get the things you want anyway. Um, and so, yeah, if you need to hear permission from anyone, this is your permission that your plans can change and your goals can change. Just because you tell somebody it, you can go back to them and say, hey, yeah, funny story. I decided I didn't want that thing anymore. <laughs> I started putting in the work and decided it wasn't for me. That's okay. Um, so just to speak a little bit to that as well, because, yeah, I think that's a big part of goal setting and the resistance that can come up. And maybe we have excuses, maybe we have reasons like, I've got so much on, I'm so busy, I'm doing all these things and they might be totally valid, but when you really want something, you're prepared to make some sacrifices. Um, saying that from, uh, from my experience, when I'm working on something in my business, I choose to get up at five in the morning and sacrifice some sleep. And I am not, so, yeah, that's my face as well. When the alarm clock goes off, that's not my, that's not my um, typical morning routine. But when you, I don't know, when you want something and you feel this is so worth it, that it doesn't have to be sleep, but there might have to be a bit of sacrifice. It might be giving up a social occasion. It might be, 
I don't know, some spending that you would normally spend on clothes, you decide to spend on your business or whatever it might be, depending on what your KPI, what your goal is. Um, but I just think, again, there's for everything you want, you're saying, for everything you say yes to, you say no to something else. So it's, uh, yeah, it's worth measuring up when you're setting yourself a goal, how much do you actually want it? Um, are you prepared to put in the work? Are you prepared to make sacrifices? If you're not, I would challenge that maybe it's never been a goal that you actually want. Maybe it's something that, so for example, this is something I see all the time and I've been guilty of this myself. Oh, I want to be a certain size. Or I want to lose weight. And then I don't put in the work. I don't diet. I don't give up alcohol. I don't, all these things that I know I could do because I don't, do I really want it? Or do I just feel like I would be more acceptable in society if I was a lower dress size? So it's those should goals, the things you feel you should want. Do you actually want them? Is that something you actually want? Or is it something somebody else told you you needed? Does that make that, sense? That's a really good point. So, so a personal KPI could be as something as sort of normal as wanting to lose weight it doesn't have to be a lofty goal does it it doesn't have to be i'm gonna you know i don't even know i'm gonna donate loads of money to charity or something it doesn't have to be huge it can be just something small and really personal can't it and you can still get loads of value from from looking after yourself by setting that as a goal and working towards those little personal kpis those little checkpoints i never even thought of losing weight as a as a personal KPI, actually, that's yeah. that's really interesting. So it can be. It totally can be. I guess the the thing that's important is: are you doing it for you, or are you doing it for someone else? And when you're doing it for you, then a hundred percent, it could be a personal KPI. It could be something that's yeah, a goal for you. And when you think about the impact that can then have on your work, when you lose weight, probably you're going to have more energy. You're going to feel better. You might dress in clothes that you feel more com confident in, so you're going to show up in a different way at work. You know, it can have all these different ripple effects, and and that's just one example of losing weight. Um, obviously, your goal could be whatever you want it to be, and it and it's really just thinking about why do I want it. One of your motivating factors could be because you'll show up at work differently you'll perform better at work. That could be one of your motivators, or that could be the last thing that you care about, <laughs> depending on your relationship with work. Yeah. So, or it could be yeah. the reason that actually you're doing it because you think you should. So it could be another reason why actually it's not the right goal for you. So I think that ties in really nicely to what you were saying. What are some common personal goals that, that women and, and your, um, your clients often because not I know you don't only deal with women, do you? But you specialise in them. So, what are some examples, other examples, in case other people are are thinking, oh, I might I might be inspired by something else Lydia's come across. Yeah. So, I guess I guess personal goals that I come across a lot are people wanting to set up their own business, having multiple streams of income. That's a really common one. Interestingly, particularly since the pandemic that's been more and more common and I think well it's obvious why that's it why that's the thing um but yeah so that's been a really interesting one and then once they've set a business it's how do I grow it so I'm not a business coach but I do a lot of accountability coaching and goal setting coaching um and also a big thing a big part of my work is career coaching so a lot of people that come to me they've got personal goals of wanting to change career or wanting to find a get a promotion at work um so a lot of them are around work but we talk I, so I had a one-to-one -one client last night and uh, a man actually so it shows I don't only work with women so he was saying actually one of his goals was around having fun and having more time to himself and having a, one a block of time once a month to go out on his own and he, he recognized he doesn't have any hobbies so we really dig down and we were like right well what do you enjoy doing and and so actually sometimes a personal KPI could be rediscovering a hobby or finding a totally new hobby um and they're really they're actually really fun goals to work on uh, so he's super motivated because he's like able to get out once a month 
um, after having a conversation with his wife, which I'm sure he will have had by now. Um, so, <laughs> uh, yeah, having, having that ability to go out and do something that feels like it's for you. And I think we dedicate so much time to our work, don't we? But knowing that you're setting your personal KPIs for you is so is so important and that's why i said it's not about the should it's not about something that somebody else wants it's about something that you want because then you're going to want to put in the work so if you want to set up your own business so that you have financial freedom that's something you want you you are motivated to do it you're motivated to get up at five in the morning or to miss out on wine night with the girls or whatever it might be you're going to be much more motivated to do it if it's something that you feel is for you and yeah does that answer the question i think that's a wonderful answer that definitely i am um, i hate my my husband always calls it snog language should need to ought to and got to and if you're saying anything like snog then it's off the it's off the table you know um I isn't it cute that. yeah that's so cute. yeah a 47 year old man saying snog there's something gorgeous about that <laughs> Also, doesn't the word snog just make you go, oh, <laughs> I'm like 14 again going, no. <laughs> oh, yeah, there was a really good book. No, never mind. I'm, I'll go off track. Um, <laughs> they made a film out of it. Something about Angus. No, never mind. Uh, Do you remember Angus songs and snogging know. or something? It was very silly. Yeah, yeah, very yeah. silly, very yeah. sweet. 14 year old Lydia. Read those books. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank goodness. <laughs> Not just dribbling. Um, okay, so I've completely taken us off course there. Um, but yes, yeah, snog language I mean, this is important. Is the thing about pancakes. It makes it more fun. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So I guess thinking about goals though, in terms of how you set them, that was something you asked me before, and I've taken us off on this little thing. So to go back to what you actually wanted me to talk about, um so in terms of figuring out what you want, I would suggest, and I love a good brainstorm or a brain dump or a mind map or whatever you want to say, get it all down on paper and really thinking about, don't put any deadlines on it, don't put any timescales on it, but in life, by the end of your life, what things do you want to have achieved, what things do you want to have experienced? It could be short term, it could be long term, but just get them all down on one piece of paper. Don't put any order to it, just get it all down. If you're struggling or if you get a few, if you get a few ideas and then you run out of ideas, a place that you might want to go to is what don't you want to experience? What don't, what in your current life do you not want to be there anymore? And then flip it on its head. So what would be the, op what would be the opposite? So if you don't want to be in debt, what what does that mean that's a really simple example but you know so i want to be debt free i don't want to be in debt i want to be debt free i you can fill in the blanks so really think about in your own life currently what are the things that you want to get away from what are the things that you don't enjoy what are the things you don't want to experience anymore and get all that down on paper now this isn't this isn't goal these aren't goals the things that you've written down they're just kind of intentions they're things that you would like um but then really it's thinking about at that stage, attach a time scale to it. So some of them might be bucket list goals of at some point in my lifetime, I would love to, whatever it might be. Some of them might be by Christmas or by the end of the month. Um, it could be that your long term goal. So you might get a goal on there that you say, right, well, within five years. So that could then be a goal that you can break down further and go, right, well, if I want to be there in five years, where do I want to be in three years? Where do I want to be in one year? So really it's breaking that down to make it really realistic. Um, and I think that's a real key. Well, it is a, it's a definitely a key part of goal setting. Um, if you're familiar with SMART goals, that's definitely one of the, the, key, the key points of when you're setting goals, it's making it realistic. Um, I actually did an Instagram post today about setting unrealistic goals can sometimes really knock your confidence because if you set yourself a goal that maybe you don't even believe can happen and it, it just feels totally out of your reach, um, there's a mindset thing there, but there's also a, what is physically possible <laughs> in a month. If you decide right in a month's time, what is physically possible? If, and again, it's looking at how much time do you have to commit to that goal? So if you have an hour a week 
that's four hours in a month, <laughs> four and a half, whatever it might be. Is it really realistic you could get that done in an hour a week? Possibly, possibly not. It depends on that goal. So really, as you're setting these goals and as you're attaching time scales to them, it's thinking what's realistic. Because if you set yourself an unrealistic goal and then you give up after a month, it hasn't happened. You're building up all this evidence for your inner critic to go next time you set a goal. It'll go, well, you remember what happened last time you set that goal? It didn't happen, did it? You can't follow through on your goals. You set these huge goals. They're never going to happen. That's what my inner critic sounds like. I don't know about yourself. Um, <laughs> in that very high and mighty voice. Um, Mine sounds like my mother, but then so do I. So it's not that un unexpected. <laughs> Really I think it's awesome realistic. that you can use this. Sorry. No, 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 no. Go on, go on. I was just going to. I was just going to. I was just going to say it's lovely that to think that you could use SMART, the acronym SMART, for your personal goals. Because I'm not sure, you know, as a business person um, or people working within businesses, um, a lot of people have heard of SMART goals, and it's and it's certainly something most business leaders or branch managers to take in a state and letting agent perspective would be regularly having to, to implement. Um, but for some people, they might not know what that is. Could you briefly explain what the acronym is? Just to remind everyone. Definitely. Definitely. And it's one, and it is one of those things. Everybody knows, oh yeah, smart goals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really good. What does that mean again? <laughs> so, so I've got them written down just in case I forget. And I do this all the time. So it's just, just in case my mind goes mad, goes, uh, freezes. So, smart so it's specific so you need to be really clear on what you want so that's where the brainstorming thing is really really helpful but then also attaching why do I want that as we talked about before so be really specific on what you want and I would add the little thing of and why you want it um it's measurable so this is where your KPIs come in are you going to know when you've achieved it? Are you going to know your milestones along the way? Um, so you want to, you want it to be measurable because otherwise you might go, oh yeah, well I've got this goal and it's really vague, it's really lofty, and you think, oh I I just want to be confident in my job. That's not measurable because how how do you know one day when you wake up how will you know that that is the day that you hit your goal and it's really important to have a measurable goal because then you get to celebrate when it happens um which i'm all up for celebrating so that's why i would say measurable is a really key bit they're all key but then attainable so we've just chatted about this make sure it's realistic but don't make it too easy because if it's too easy will you put in the work or will you just put it off and go, oh, I could do it next week because I could just do it like that. I don't have to think about it. So make sure it's realistic, make sure it's, sorry, make sure it's attainable, um, but not too easy. So it still feels like a challenge. I think, I, do, I would, I'm gonna make a sweeping statement. I think everybody likes a bit of a challenge. That is a sweeping statement, but I think challenge can be a good thing. And then you feel like you've worked at it and then you're more likely to celebrate afterwards again all about the celebration here don't know if you notice it <laughs> a little theme um <laughs> and then the r stands for relevant so it needs to be relevant to the life that you want um so in terms of thinking about well where if your goal is a five-year goal where might you like to be in 10 years does it link in or if you've set yourself a goal by the end of the year is that relevant to the life you want in five years time that's maybe easier to, to be thinking about so and again that links into your make sure you know why you want it because you might have this goal that you want to earn a whole load of money and that's great but maybe thinking about what do you want to spend it on why why do you want it why is it important to you and and having that as your motivation rather than just this amount of money if that makes sense and then the last one is time bound give it a deadline otherwise it will just constantly be put off you'll constantly be putting it off and go oh i could do it next month i could do it next month and then suddenly it's five years later and you know further forward <laughs> definitely and i so, think that that will help with procrastination won't it because if you know you've got to get it done within a certain a certain amount of time then uh, you're less likely to put it off um and because you've 
reverse engineered it as you're describing you know if you've got a five-year goal and then you work backwards so what am i going to do what's it going to look like at five years so what have i got to do what's it going to look like in four three two and therefore what's it going to look like by the end of this year by the end of this month by the end of this week what can i do about it today have i got that right yes yeah 100 percent. and Again, just to speak to this, because I know a lot of people that I coach are like, I don't know where I want to be in five years time. Um, and, and actually, yeah, fair enough. And this is the thing, again, you can change your plan. If you set yourself a five year plan, it's okay. Even if you've been working on this goal that then suddenly isn't massively relevant it's all experience it's all you've had some wins that you've celebrated along the way it's all taken you somewhere you've probably met some new people learnt some new skills got some new experience you just never know where stuff's going to take you but i mean in terms of the five-year plan thing we couldn't have predicted covid could we so that screwed up multiple well hundreds thousands millions, millions of people's five-year plan <laughs> um, so there has to be that flexibility in it even if you know right in five years i know that i want to be and you have a really specific plan that's wonderful that is wonderful but if we don't have a bit of fluidity in it you're going to be disappointed and that sounds really negative and i don't mean it to you might be further ahead you might be further ahead than you wanted to be in five years but it's just thinking about what what might life throw at you there's we just don't know, we don't know we? so we can have our yeah. But, yeah yeah i think that's a really nice way of looking at it because i'm husband again um often references i'm sure it's gary v or somebody like that i don't know if you you know gary v he's a huge uh, estate agent trainer and he's extremely Okay. passionate and, and probably testosterone and rah, 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 like this and if you're not doing it right then f off and um and that's and that's amazing and very inspiring at times but he and I, I it could not be him i could be completely misquoting in which case i apologize gary not that you'll be watching um he says <laughs> it's over five years within six months you won't have it done within six months you'll be a lot further forward than someone that uh, than you would be otherwise sorry but i quite like the idea of actually almost doing the opposite which is setting yourself a five-year plan and kind of being a bit fluid with it but that doesn't mean you don't hit your personal kpis it doesn't mean you don't try and hit them it just means that actually if you don't get there it's probably all right because i think a lot of us end up beating ourselves up to the point of like you said earlier at the point of no return the point of well i might as well sack it all off then because i'm never going to get anywhere am i look you know and it becomes this massive drama um and puts you off doing any of it <laughs> yeah 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 and and actually you can see why you're in a critic has a field day because that stuff happens and then yeah so your inner critic is the stories the negative stories you tell yourself of all the reasons why you can't and you shouldn't and you're not good enough and you all that and and when you're feeding into that then next time you try and set yourself a goal it's it becomes a bit of a self-fulfilling prophecy there's ways to change it there's totally ways to turn back but it's harder um so that's where i would say setting realistic goals being comfortable with changing the goal changing the goal posts being comfortable that they might come closer but being comfortable that they might get pushed back um we just never know and and i think like i say there's a resistance i know there's a big resistance around making plans because of that um but actually i use this example sometimes of if you're going to go on holiday you wouldn't how would you know what to pack in your bag if you didn't know where you were going? And then, so you might pack everything for a ski holiday, but actually you end up on a beach holiday. That's going to not be great. But actually on your way, you might have gone on a detour and gone via a supermarket and bought all your beach stuff and, it, and it's all fine, you know? So actually along the way, we pick up stuff that is important that might seem really irrelevant at the time. But I know in my life, in terms of my career, I, it's all about the detours. It's all about the detours that I didn't plan for, that have created opportunities that have 
me and I've met meant I've met people that have been really influential on on my life and you'd look back at the time and you go well that was a waste of time and actually I really believe nothing is a waste of time it can feel like it in the moment so I studied for four years to do a degree I never used um so and in a very like so I studied speech language therapy so very vocational kind of just going down one route and I didn't do that I went so I fell back on my volunteering and went into schools and youth work for a time and then I qualified as a life coach and blah 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 but actually that's not wasted because I still learned stuff I still met people I wouldn't have met my husband if I hadn't done so all these things you think yeah actually it's not wasted it's it's how you view it and it's the opportunities that can come out of that um there you go there's another massive tangent I loved there, it but... <laughs> I loved it I, as always I loved it um can I just pop quickly say hello to Kath and hello to Kim and thank you ever so much for being here it's very kind of you both um I would like to ask Lydia another question which is as we've been talking about goals and changing goals um I've been talking to a client this week who is actually who's been on the path of of world domination like a lot of us are in estate and lettings agents um well estate agents in particular it can be very raw <laughs> you know it's a very it's a very high paced mad industry you know and it can be uh, it can be very fierce and that's very exciting a lot of the time but sometimes you go oh golly i don't want to do it anymore and um they're thinking of actually dialing things back so they've got beautiful offices and all of this prime location and they're thinking i just go do it from a bedroom you know and and that and that's really anti everything they've been like and everything they've been possibly indoctrinated into thinking that they wanted to be you know maybe they weren't actually in tune with themselves maybe they were and actually just after 10 years they it's the time for change because it's a goal change situation but also the opposite happens so um there are quite a few lettings agents, for example, um, and um, they get approached often by their own landlords who no longer want this part of their portfolio or indeed the whole portfolio and would like them because they've built a relationship with that letting agent over a long time and say, please, could you sell it for me? And they go, well, I can't do sales because I'm just a letting agent. And this is a key phrase that, that gets thrown around so much. I just do lettings. I only do lettings. Trust me, lettings is incredibly difficult. Uh, the legislation and the paperwork and the people management is just incredible what people do. When it my point being, when, when it comes to that mindset shift, that goal change of either I'm just lettings and I want to grow or I've been I've got this beautiful office and, and all of this and actually I want to dial it back how do you help people make that gear shift because sometimes when I speak to people certainly they've been stuck in that gear shift location for, for maybe months years where actually they've just gotten stuck and they can't push themselves to dial it back to where actually they're going to do more personal KPI hitting or upscale it to where actually they're more than capable of being, but they're intimidated or worried or nervous. So I don't know what I'm asking. How do you help people shift that gear shift? Such, such a good question. And it actually, I don't remember where I've read it. I really want to credit it but I don't know where I've read it. I read an analogy that goes so well with your gear shift the other day about if you're in reverse, you can't go straight into, um, you can't go forward. You have to press the clutch first. <laughs> Does that make yes. sense? So <laughs> completely understand. that's probably good. I didn't credit whoever read it, whoever I read it from because I'm butchered but it. <laughs> um, but, <laughs> but it's, it's just such a good analogy for you have to press you have to press pause you can't just go back forward or forward back or left right you have to yeah ha there's a place where you you reset and you go what's important what's important for me what's important in my life what's important in my work what are my priorities like and these are big questions that you can't just go oh well 
like if I was to ask you that now, just off your off the top of your head, you may know, but actually there's quite a lot of stuff that you've got to go through to fit to figure that out sometimes. So that's that's what I mean, what do I mean by a reset? It's really looking at what have I learned up to life, up up to this point in my life. What have I learned about what works for me, what doesn't work for me? What have I learned about what I want? What things in my life currently do I really not want and I want to get rid of? How do I get rid of those things? And how do I come out the other side without feeling completely beaten up and exhausted and confident that this is the right thing? You know, so I've actually just created um, an ebook on it. So it's all, all about reset, uh, pressing the reset button. Um, so, well, yeah, I'll, I can talk about it later if you want. So in terms of pressing the reset button, it's really about reassessing, realigning, rethinking, all the re's, <laughs> but we kind of, kind of getting clear on for you, what do you want this next season to look like? And how many of us at the moment, having gone through a global pandemic, having gone through lockdown, life has looked very different for a very long time. How many of us are now in this place of going, well, hang on, all this stuff that I thought I liked, all this stuff that I've just been go, go, go and not even really thinking about, I, would, I just took it on board as this just how my life is now. <laughs> and we've had a bit of time to kind of press that reset button and go, hmm, is this working for me? And if it isn't, you've then got to make a decision. You can stick with it, which I would suggest is probably a place of fear. If, if it's not working for you, if you decide, no, it is working, then absolutely steam ahead, great. But if you're like, oh, it's not working for me, but I'm gonna stay because better the devil you know, at least I know where I am, I'm in my comfort zone. Or this isn't working for me and actually, I'm going to face those consequences because you almost get to a point where staying in that place feels scarier than making the step out. Um, so I've gone a bit further with your question, I guess, than, than you were really asking. But in terms of, yeah, it's really in terms of getting to shift in terms of a different plan, it's pressing the reset button and it's going, what, what works for me? What do I want to experience in my life? Where am I experiencing it? Where, what things are working? Let's do more of those things. What things aren't working? Let's do less of those things. Yeah, absolutely. And there you go. That makes perfect sense, I think, because, um, and, and it doesn't have to be an hour's coaching session, does it? I mean, for some people, it might be that you, you know, they can, they can get your ebook and do it on their own. Other people might need a little bit more support. And I know there's people like me out there that have needed months of weeks of, of, poor you saying the same darn things over and over again and um but i think i think that's all okay as well that some people do have to go slower and some people can go quicker it just depends where you're at um i've just had a i can just see here there's a message here from uh from sharon hi sharon so I had three companies within the property world and was a market leader in lettings, but after the other half popped his clogs, oh, Sharon, I'm so sorry. Um, I sold both rental companies. Biggest mistake as I found it very difficult to adjust to being a nothing in my mind. It's the weirdest feeling. Yeah. Oh my goodness. See, that's exactly what we were talking about. Sharon, that's, thank you so much for sharing that. That's incredibly, uh, poignant and and exactly what I was just saying you know how do you how do you readjust your mindset to who you might be now because I didn't have anything so dramatic as Sharon but I went from I went from being a medical school student training to be a surgeon where even the fish and chip shop lady was impressed you know when she says what do you do love and um to then telling people I was an estate agent and um it felt like I'd gone from being the archangel great gabriel to being one of the little demons in next to hades because oh that's a mix of metaphors isn't it Be because it, the the public perception of a state agency i don't know if it's changed and, but it, it certainly was horrible back in 2014 um so yeah i i can def definitely understand sharon she said try going through all of the last year 
and having second run of mental illness, wanting to jack it all in and running, run away as I call it, and then discovering your blooming well, perimenopausal, I'm doomed, you're not doomed. That's an awful lot to deal with on your plate there, isn't it? Lydia, is there anything that you could say that's more beneficial than me saying, oh, bless you? I mean, again, definitely that sentiment of how much you're juggling right now, that is such a lot. And I think I don't I don't have a magic bullet. I wish I had a magic wand. I really do. But it it's one of those when you are so busy in your work, which it sounds like you were Sharon. It was Sharon, wasn't it? I'm not saying the name wrong. Yeah, it was Sharon. Sharon. Okay. Yeah, so when you're so tied in and that is your life, that's your world for a lot of people, when those things are taken away or when you shift gear into something else, there's a massive adjustment. And it sounds like, Sharon, you've had to adjust to a whole heap of things in a very short space of time. So I'm really not surprised that right now you're feeling like, who am I? What am I here for? What is my purpose? Um, I just really want to say you're not a nobody. You're not a nothing. I can't remember which word you used. That, that isn't true. You have a lot that is going on um, and you're dealing with that but there's still a life and that's so that sounds so flippant doesn't it and so maybe so easy for me to say and, and I do get that but, but also it's I'd hope it's an encouragement I really would um, to have a have a real deep think and press that reset button and go of of this next season in my life what do I want to experience what things bring me joy? What things make my day, what things make a day good? Um, if I was having a good day, how would I know? Because when, when you're in those depths, it can just feel like everything blurs into one and there's grief and there's loss and there's, honest, it sounds like you're dealing with an awful lot. And I think you can get caught up in that and, and it just feels so heavy. Um, so there's a place where you can, it's not a KPI necessarily, but it's thinking, what things can you be looking for? What glimmers of hope? How could you measure a good day? What, what would that look like? If you woke up one morning and everything was fixed, how would you know? Um, just so that you kind of know what you're looking out for. You know, I was saying earlier about, you might have a goal of, I want to be confident in my job. How would you know you're confident in your job? It, it's having those specifics. I don't know if that's helpful. I can't, I can't see the comments. I'm not showing up on my screen. Kath, I don't know if that's helpful. Kath has added that hormonal upheaval can be horrible. <clears throat> um, and I can certainly attest to that myself. I, I only just was speaking to somebody about that this morning. Um, complaining that I've got no consistency because for weeks at a time I'll feel frankly, Sharon, to share how you feel um, uh, suicidal, my hormones will take me within within moments of not being like that at all. And it's quite baffling. So I do certainly understand that perspective of it. Um, and, and Kath very kindly agreed that as a menopausal lady herself, uh, the hormone upheaval can be absolutely horrendous. Um, I'm trying to find it. I've just pressed it. It's disappeared, which is difficult. Um, But Kath recommends support from others, self-care and learning more about what you want can help you through and it's worth seeking. But Sharon says that's the problem is actually right now there isn't joy in anything. And she walked into the doctors last week in a hysterical state saying you have to help me. I've never done that in my life. So shameful. I promise you it's not shameful. I've done the same thing and they have seen it hundreds if not thousands of times in their career and I speak not only as someone that's done it but as somebody that's worked in it. Um, I worked in A&E for a long time and in lots of various community uh, medical situations and um, that's what they're there for, that's what we're there for, you know, we'd rather you told us because then amazing people like Lydia can help you dig deep um, and wade through what is frankly a horrendous 
situation that you're going through and and i don't think there's anything to be said other than we're ghastly sorry for you and uh, and thank you for sharing with us and frankly from my perspective you're certainly not nobody to me and not nothing to me because it's wonderful that you're here <laughs> um and uh, that means yeah. that's made my day just to add on, <laughs> yeah and just to add on i'm just so glad that you were brave enough to go and seek support Absolutely. actually that's that's incredible in itself and um, and there's that's why medical professionals are there it, it really is so yeah just good for you for acknowledging it and having the insight that something wasn't right um and i really really from the bottom of my heart hope that a bit of joy starts seeping back in absolutely absolutely well it's actually nine o'clock already here so that means we have been whiffling for a for a long 45 minutes i wonder lydia you mentioned an ebook earlier in this chat if you could perhaps um tell us a little bit more about that and tell us a little bit about how um sharon you have not brought down the tone there is absolutely no need to apologize we have already covered some slightly uh less than chirpy things that's just the nature of life isn't it and that's what we're here for to make sure that we're all talking about the real things so nothing's hidden Absolutely. everything's real and it's hardcore sales not hardcore sales that's why that's my tagline because i really mean it um mm -hmm. and i really mean that sharon um sorry lydia before i interrupted myself um tell us about your book please if you would be so kind and the various other ways that people might be able to reach out to work with you because i know you've got a free group as well that i used the cover photo for the event yeah yeah absolutely so i've just created it well it's called the get it done starter pack so in there there's a it's kind of everything that we've talked about this evening actually i wasn't meaning to introduce all those things but it's clearly just in my head so there's a how to press reset ebook that talks you through a bit of the process that i've kind of touched touched on a little bit this evening there's some journal prompts to help you get clear on the things that bring you joy the things that you do want to experience in life the things that you've learned in your life up till now and how to make those things work for you and there's also a goal setting workbook so it talks you through you don't have to remember what smart stands for because it walks you through the process uh, so you can sign up uh, to get a free copy of the get it done starter pack so that's over at worksformecoaching.com forward slash gid stands for get it done um, so you can you can grab that and um, yeah that's my that's my gift to you but I mean feel free to come join me in my Facebook group so my Facebook group is women together finding happiness in work and life um, and I also run an accountability monthly coaching membership called cheerleader in your pocket um, which again you'd be more than welcome to come and join us over there so that's 19 pounds a month for accountability to move towards whatever it is you're working towards whether that's a personal kpi whether that's a work goal uh, whatever it is that you're working on so we have women in there who are growing their businesses we have women in there who are losing weight who are reorganizing their houses Every literally whatever your goal is um i know it can be helpful so we have free month well we have monthly training in there we have monthly coaching calls there's daily prompts there's so much good stuff and um, so you can find out more from worksmecoaching.com forward slash cheerleader um, so there you go hopefully that isn't too much information all in one go um, I'm very happy if anybody wants to tag me very happy to answer any questions if you want to comment in this video I can always pop back if you watch it on replay I'll pop back in and, and answer any questions but I hope that's been okay for you that's, well. that's fabulous for me thank you I forgot to say at the beginning if you're watching on replay do leave us a hashtag replay because it alerts us to the fact that you're here and make sure that we can uh, keep an eye on it and make sure we answer any questions that might come up throughout but that's a bit pointless saying that at the end <laughs> it's all a learning curve right <laughs> no because it's been so great people will have stayed with us till the very end so they'll have heard that <laughs> <so> it's great <laughs> i love your optimism marvelous marvelous well thank
thank you, Lydia. I've certainly learned a lot, but then I always do from you because you're just a shiny beacon of optimism despite everything that you deal with yourself. So um, thank you ever so much for giving up your evening to chat with us all. And I do hope yeah. lots of people find it helpful and uh, we start moving the industry into heart core sales instead of heart core sales. <laughs> it's actually harder to say out loud than it is to type. Thank you, Sharon. Thank you, Kim. <laughs> and thank you, Kath, for joining us on the live event. And um, until next time. Cheerio, everybody. Yeah, thanks so much. Thanks, Lydia. Bye. Yeah, bye.